A warm welcome to Lost for Words, a podcast exploring the opinions, glories and interesting stories of guests. I am your host Jason and for this week's episode I am joined by Abby Levering. Abby is a nominee for the 2021 edition of Miss Scotland and she speaks to me about her candidacy as well as everything that's involved in the process of entering into the competition. One of the requirements of all Miss Scotland nominees is to support a chosen charity. Abby's auntie was recently diagnosed with hereditary hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Therefore, Abby's chosen charity is the British Heart Foundation. Abby tells me more about her aunt's symptoms, the scare for all the family who then had to get screened, and she speaks about her decision to raise funds for the BHF by climbing Ben Lomond. I will speak to you on the other side. A quick housekeeping note before we get started, please leave a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts, whether that be Apple, Google, Spotify, Podbean or any other platform. It's the best way the podcast can grow and better content can be produced for you, the listener. It's your listening experience that matters the most. But enough from me, now on to today's episode of Lost for Words. Right, hello, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Um, what have you been doing today? Um, absolutely nothing, being lazy off work, so just had a lazy day today. <laughs> I seen you were out, what was it like being back in, was it Sanctuary? Yeah, oh, so good being back, honestly, it was completely back to normal, um, so it was actually, it was so weird, but it was really good. How much did they enforce the mask? It's the most ridiculous thing ever that you need, you're supposed to wear them when you're standing at the bar, but then not when you're dancing. Yeah, I literally didn't even put my mask on once, to be honest. Um, I didn't even know that was a rule that I had to be on at the bar. <laughs> but no, um, I didn't even. It was only really the staff that had masks. Ah, uh, right, fair enough. But yeah. it's, it's a silly rule that you're supposed to, unless you're on the dance floor dancing, you're supposed to have a mask on. Oh, right, I was on the dance floor majority of the night anyway, so I didn't even noticed that. Covid police can't get you then, no? No. <laughs> right then, um, on today to talk about your Miss Scotland and the fundraising for your auntie. Yeah. But we'll get to know a bit about you first, so tell me where you are from and a little bit about your upbringing so, and your school, stuff like that. Yeah, um, so I'm um, from, I'm originally from Crookston but I'm staying in Newton Mearns. Um, I went to while you were high school, but I wasn't too keen on school at all, really. Um, so I was just kind of stayed until I could leave, and I just went um, to college um, so that I could get into uni after that, and I'm now studying criminal justice, and I'm going into my third year in September of that. Amazing. So we'll go back to the school element of that. What aspects of school did you not enjoy? <laughs> all of it. Um, mm-hmm. I was like just one of those people that just kind of, like floated through school I didn't try but I also didn't like not care about it completely I just just wanted to get it finished and um, get out of it to be honest. (laughs) Then which college did you go to and was your experience at college better than school? Yeah much better Um, I went to uh, the one in South Lanarkshire so it was the uh, Inti School Bride Um, yeah that was much better I enjoyed it so much more so it showed me that it wasn't like actual like education stuff that I hated. It was just the school and the people that I didn't really, I just clashed with. Um, but it was much a much better experience in college. School is just the, the treated as this be all and end all when there are lots of successful people that that don't follow the traditional path. I know, yeah, you're completely right with that because it's it's kind of if you don't get your hires, you think it's the end of the world when really there's shortcuts and stuff to get you actually into what you want to do. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's the route I took to just kind of get get as as good as I could get, not push myself too hard. Um, and that's that's really what I've done. So, yeah. What drew you towards social work? Um, it's just it's more like the like the criminal side of it. I like um just I just felt, thought it was dead interesting. Like I know it sounds pretty cliche, but see like all like the crime movies and stuff like that, like the lawyer and mm-hmm. stuff. Um. I just find it so interesting and I've just always wanted to do that from like a young age. 
um, in criminal justice, I just felt like it was the best course for that because it is like you can go into such a wide variety of jobs from it. Um, so that's just really why I chose that course. You're going into third year now. What is your end goal in terms of a career with that? What would you like to go in and do once you've graduated? Um, I've actually not decided completely. My mum's um, hassling me <laughs> to pick <laughs> um, something after, so I'm stressing it out. But I think the, the social work side is something I'm leaning more towards with it. Um, I, so yeah, I think that's probably the direction I'll go in, but I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm still, I've still got, I've just got a year left, so I need to make my mind up, but <laughs> that's that's what's looking likely. To ask you the cliche question then, you're talking about crime films and TV series. Which yeah. ones jump out at you in your head when you think about that? See, like, just, like, the CSIs and stuff like that, like, um, just, like, and see, like, true crime, like, documentaries. I absolutely love them. Like, see the ones on Netflix, that's that's my go-to. With stuff like that, it's not even so much movies, it's actually, like, the ones that are, like, like real, they, they freak me out, but I like them. <laughs> You, I don't know if you're a podcast listener, but I'm going to give you a, a tip to listen to the true crime podcast called Case File. It's unbelievable. Oh. It's an Australian guy that narrates it, but they do cases from everywhere. It's honestly right. the, the, I wasn't a true crime person until I started listening to this. And now yeah. it's probably one of the genuine highlights of my week, which probably makes me sound really sad, but no. it's just, it's that good. <laughs> It is, they are so interesting, it's sick, but I just, I love listening to them. People's minds are fascinating on both both sides of it, even the, 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 the perpetrator, so to speak, the person that commits the crime, but then the process of catching them and just yeah. think how they think, is, it is it's a fascinating world. It is, it really is actually fascinating. No, I enjoy them. <laughs> Such a weirdo, but I do. Only then the last year we've been in lockdown, coronavirus, the face-to-face lectures have gone away. How did you find that? Um, quite stressful, actually, because I went, I've never been in uni. Um, I, so because of college, I, I went straight into second year. Um, so I, I skipped out the first year of uni. So um, just that the last year, it was like first time being at uni, trying to grasp it all and then not really being able to, like, talk to people about it it was quite quite stressful luckily um two girls I went to college with were also in my uni course so I could kind of text them and ask like for help but see you just try to remember to log on like I was getting so many emails like you've missed this lecture and I was like oh my god because it would just be so much better being actually in so I knew what I was doing and see like trying to um like if you're wanting help with it and like that see you need to send an email and then wait for one back rather than just being able to ask them face to face so not was quite difficult and um, to be honest it was definitely something that I had to get used to. You're going into your sort of degree year and you've never been in a uni lecture technically then is that right? Yeah. It's wild but then it's it's been like that for everyone and especially now the exam results were out today and stuff and you think that there are going to be children that go to university or young people that go to university that have never sat an exam so if you're if you're a sixth year this if you just finish sixth year there you yeah. missed your fifth year exams and you missed your sixth year exams. You're going to be going to uni. It's no, it's, it's crazy. It is. It is. It's it's scary because it, and it's a shame as well because a lot of the like about uni is like the full experience of it all, and there's just I mean there's someone like me that that, that will never really experience that because I don't even think I think my uni is one of the only ones that isn't actually doing it, like that isn't but going back in and I think they're only getting kind of like practical. Um, like subjects back, people that kind of need to be in. Uh, but Which uni do you go to? Um, it's UWS and Paisley. Are you still Paisley? I know most of them are now in Hamilton. Are they called the Lanarkshire campus? Oh, see, to be honest, I actually don't know. <laughs> it might be. See, because I've never been in it, I think it's Paisley. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's right, actually. That's, you're saying that... You've never been, you've never even been, you're part of the union, you've never been, and that's not even necessarily your fault because you've never had to go. It's, it's crazy because it's a shame because my sister's got like so many like uni friends, but I, I've only just got those two, two girls that I went to college with um, that I know in my course, so it's, it's quite annoying. Plus the big the uni experience that people like me had got to go 
And the, when mm-hmm. I think of uni and the uni experience, it's always freshers. Just that first yeah. week where your your world opens up because you go from having your kind of own little bubble in your small world and you go to uni and it's you're meeting people from everywhere and that's the full point of it. Whereas people like yourself now that are just starting have not had the chance to do that because of lockdowns and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. I know. It is. It's a shame. But I'm just glad that I've had, that I've got like a good like set of like, pals as well outside of uni because some people like a, a big part of the reason they, they apply for uni is to meet new people and stuff like that, as well as obviously getting a degree. But I think that's what like spurs people on to go to uni rather than to just go straight into a job. Is that? Absolutely. That makes sense actually. We'll move on then to yeah. the, the Miss Scotland stuff to start with. Yeah. That's still a, I was when I was looking it up like Miss Scotland, it's still a beauty pageant, but I feel like when you say that phrase, it makes it sound very Americanized. I know. But yeah. when when did you first become interested in or aware of beauty pageantry as such? So it was only um it was at the I think it was almost when the first lockdown, like just before that, just before the first lockdown, it was actually my dad. My dad's been trying to get me to do it for years, but um, I think you need to be 18 or something to apply. So it was just really when I turned 18, it was my dad that actually sent my picture in because um, he just knows loads of people that are like involved in it and stuff, like the sponsors. So he just thinks it's quite a good opportunity um, to get involved with them and stuff. And then I literally had an interview um, just before the first lockdown. Uh, um, and then it kind of everything was obviously like the pandemic and stuff like that so I never really heard anything about it at all until um, when would that have been maybe like five months ago or something like that I got a call literally just saying um, you've made the final so I was a bit like oh my god it was like a whole year later that I hadn't really heard anything from it to then be told I was in the final I was like oh, try to prepare for it I assume then the last Miss Scotland contest would have taken place in 2019. There wouldn't have been one last year. Yeah, there wasn't, no. And now your dad, that's so used to have been in last year and they've just put it back a year. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting. Your dad, your own, someone's own, like daughter's own dad, putting the, the, the girl forward. So what was his thinking behind that? Why had he always wanted you to do it? Um, so he does like events. Um, he's in a, does like he's an events management, and then um, one of his events is the Girls Day Out show, and then um, so loads of the sponsors that do that are involved with the Miss Scotland would always be at the show, and my dad just kind of got to know a lot of people, and they've obviously told him like, oh, it's a really good um experience and stuff. He knows like past um Miss Scotland's as well, and they're just they were just like, oh yeah, like, saying that it was just like, great and stuff, and so he just put me forward for it <laughs> at my surprise but no I, I'm glad he did though because it has actually been fun even though it's been like completely different I'm sure from other years um I, I've, I've actually met like such like lovely girls um so no it has been good from when your dad had sort of put you forward for it to now what has the process been like what have you had to do what have you gone through um so when I got the call a few months ago um have I done I've just kind of it's sorts challenges that we do, um, but we don't find out who wins them until the final. So it's stuff like photo shoots, um, so like we would need to recreate something that they sent, like they would send us out an image basically, and we need to recreate it and then go to them and we do like a photo shoot and stuff like that, um, different stuff as well. So it's just really a lot of the challenges is to promote the sponsors and it's whoever promotes them in like the like the most creative way, um, wins the challenge. So, um. I think like for examples so say, say it's like clothes and stuff like if we get sent out an outfit it's whoever gets the best photo and um, stuff like that are you someone who so would you have like a photographer with you did someone direct you or is it up to you to have the creative say yourself well it's it, they, they say, um, both of them so one of one of them they actually had is in like a studio um, and they had the photographer and like a makeup artist and stuff like that so that was one of them and then like different ones is just kind of me posting it on my own Instagram to just promote and like tag and say like all oh, like where you can buy the products and stuff and um because it all is like really all about the sponsors kind of trying to get them like the recognition and stuff like that 
So it's just whoever um, does that the best that just wins each um, challenge. I'm trying to think if there's anything other um, challenges. Oh, there was a fitness challenge as well that I actually nearly died at. Um, that we were <laughs> doing. It was, oh my God, it was horrific. It was when the weather was so nice and it was outside. Oh my God, it was so hard. What did that involve? Um, so it was just basically like who could do the stuff the fastest. So it was like, um, they had like all the machines outside. I'm trying like it was like you know like the rower and stuff like that and the bike. Yeah. And you had to get like, you had to do so much on it and then but at the fastest and they were taking everybody's like time down. But I'm I'm sure I, I'm not winning that one. <laughs> like the Miss Scotland Olympic Games type situation there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In in terms of the, the the sort of photography and the more quote unquote glamorous side. Someone like me would just see, if you upload a picture to Instagram, I only see the picture. But what are the more tricky elements that go behind that picture? Um, Just kind of, um, try to think. Like just making sure that you're, see, the thing is with taking the photo, it's like you don't want to focus the picture too much on yourself because you're trying to promote what you've been given. So just kind of try to remember to like, show off that and then include like all the links and stuff and where people can buy it because I'm quite forgetful when I do that I I, I take the photo and it's kind of I'm trying to make myself look good when really it's all about promoting what we've been saying um, and then just try to get the best photo really it's never easy <laughs> What's an example of things that you get sent is it always just fashion dresses and stuff or do you ever get items hardware things like that um, so some of it is like skincare. Um, other stuff it's like wee pajama sets. Um, and then it's like a cashmere blanket we got sent as well for one of them. So it was like to take like the best like picnic kind of photo and include the blanket. So like that's what was challenging. So it's like trying to get the the blanket the center of the photo, but you need to also like make yourself look good as well in it. What? sort of challenges and what's made it different this year because I assume you've had to have been doing a lot of the stuff with restrictions so what have you and the other contestants this year had to do change about the way you do things versus non-pandemic times? I think it's a lot more social media orientated this year Um, I think previous years it was more like I'm trying to think of the difference but but as like a lot of the like social media this time I think it's a lot more like photos and um, promoting it on your Instagram and stuff like that because obviously we can't really do anything all together because there is like 12 finalists so before it was like trying to get everybody so we were having to do it like split like um so six girls were in at the photo shoot and then we had to leave and it was like kind of like time slots but it was probably a lot more fun before where everybody could kind of go together but I'm not entirely sure exactly what what challenges they used to get um I think it is they're quite quite similar, but it's just a lot more like um social media and stuff this year. Is there going to be a pageant in person or will it just be an online type thing? Well, oh, there is the final. So the final is the 27th of August. But usually it would be like a full night out. Your family could go. Um it would be like a crowd and stuff, and then the judges and then us. But this year it's literally just um the finalists and then the judges, which is kind of annoying because your family can't be there and stuff like that. Um, but they're going to do a live stream of it so that they can watch it, which is good. Uh, so it's a, like just a skeleton crew, almost like a behind-closed-doors football game, to give a, an equivalent. It would only be the players yeah. that are there. Yeah, exactly. How do they judge? What's the criteria? How would, how does somebody win Miss Scotland? What do they need to do? So it's just who wins most challenges, and then it's... um. Uh, what's, the, what's the last thing we do again there's like a what is it it's like a, we need to come up with like a thousand words <laughs> to say at it so it's kind of who's got the best like speech at the end as well that they get um, points on it's all about points this year I think I think previously it was just kind of the challenges and then like ju- like the judges at the end but this year it's like point scoring almost because that's why the social media is coming into it it's like most well, shares and likes are um, coming into the total as well at the end so the, it sounds as though there's there's like a, a multitude of sort of categories, social media, speeches, 
challenges and then it'll all get tallied up whoever has the most points is the winner yeah pretty much how do you feel about your chances yeah good um it's obviously one that that is like close to home so I'm just trying to do the best I can for the charity it's not even really about them the Miss Scotland part eh, because obviously it's something that I, I, I would have wanted to do anyway if I wasn't in it so just I'm just trying to get the, the most money that I can get out of it just so that it's beneficial for the charity yeah, that's a next that's a good little intro to the next question and so if you win obviously that how does that then benefit the charity see just being in it I think because I, I don't know if we need to have all of it done for the final but I'm going to keep mine open anyway um, until September time um, to try and just get the most that I can get but I don't know maybe just more exposure if I win um, for it now, ultimately exposure does help raise donations as well that's that's the aim of the game really yeah so that would be really just what I was, would be looking for if I was to win it just kind of just to get more exposure of, of the charity but also as well um, the girls are, are doing really good charities as well so I hope they do really well with it I think just being in it, it it's kind of just get, gave us an excuse to, to do it um, but I think all the girls they've all chose really good charities as well so I think they probably would have done it regardless Does every contestant choose a charity? Is that is that the way it works? Yeah so that's part of it um, so yeah all the girls are doing ones as well I hope they're getting on good. In terms of you, if you were to win and you become Miss Scotland, what does that then act as a springboard towards? Where do you see that taking you, so to speak? Um, I think there's loads of different things you can do with it. It's My dad was telling me all this stuff to like talk me into because I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Um, but you get like a modelling contract and stuff like that and then... You then be- enter Miss, you become, you're in the Miss World contest, is that right? Is yeah, that the way? yeah, that's what I was trying to think of there. Uh-huh, so that's what you go to. I can't, I don't know what country it's in this year. I can't remember. I think, um, I can't remember. I think it was in China last, last year or the year before that or something, but it changes every year where they have it. But no, that would just be amazing to get to go to something like that. It's something that I watch, you know, when it's on the TV and stuff. So being actually a part of it would be amazing. Round off then this section and then we'll talk about more about the charity and your auntie in, in detail. If there was a say a young girl that's we'll say eight or nine years old and she was considering doing the beauty pageantry stuff, what would you say to her? Just to definitely do it because it is such a good way of meeting people. Um, even if you know you don't win it, you've still got made friends and good opportunities to work with brands that you wouldn't have expected to but also to just not get caught up in it too much and not you know like say you don't get the most likes on one of the pictures just don't take it personal and make sure that you know you stay true to yourself through it and stuff like that as well and just don't get caught up in it too much at the end of the day it's not the end of the world if you don't win and um, it's just it's good fun really and that's all that matters that's an excellent answer well done Thanks. well done <laughs> Right, moving on to the fundraising then. So you are going to climb Ben Lomond um, to raise funds for the British Heart Foundation as a mark of respect, a support towards your auntie? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a bit about your auntie and your relationship with her. Um, I'm really close with my auntie, so it's my mum's um, sister. I, and growing up, I've always called her like my second mum because we, we look more than I like than my actual mum. So I'm really, really close with her. And how old are you now? 19, 20? 19, yeah. 19. So in your 19 years, what's your fondest memory you have with your auntie? I've got so many, but probably more recently. Um, at Christmas there, my mum and dad got stuck away abroad because of the lockdown. So she had me and my siblings up for Christmas and it was just really good fun. She's she's like the fun auntie in the family. So that was good because we're now all old enough to actually be able to, you know, have a laugh and have a party together. So that was really good doing that. That's lovely. Yeah. Her heart condition. Tell me a little bit about that then. What is like, what is the heart condition called and when was she diagnosed? Yeah, so it's hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and she was diagnosed, I think, about two years ago now. Um, and it's basically like 
thickening of the heart tissue so it just it's, it makes it it's harder for it to pump blood because it's um thicker and just like more oh I don't know what the word I'm thinking of but yeah it's, it's just more the if your blood is more dense it's harder for it to travel around the body yeah so, exactly yeah that's the one yeah the, was there a process of her realizing something was wrong or was this diagnosis totally random just as part of like a routine health check no so she was getting like heart palpitations and she was describing it as like fluttering of her heart and it was kind of like she was getting a bit out of breath every time it was happening and it was happening more and more often and then she just thought it was strange so she just went to get it checked over and then um got told that but it was actually um hereditary and she got it from my gran but my gran never knew she she had it and she died um how long ago now i think 30 years ago or something she died of cancer so she never um got it diagnosed so my auntie never knew that it was anything that she would have needed to worry about does that then mean that you and all the rest of your family have been screened for that or would that only happen if you suspect something was wrong no, so we all had to get tested because um, it's obviously my mum's mum as well. She could pass it down to us. Mm -hmm. So um, basically just all the, like my grand's children and um, their children had to get tested. So that included me and my brother and sisters and uh, my mum and stuff. But luckily everyone was fine. Um, it was only my auntie that got it, which was bittersweet because it's a shame that she has to go through it alone. But obviously it's good because... Um, nobody else should have had it which would be terrible I think as as you're saying there that it's terrible that she does have it but I bet you all the money in the world if you asked her how would you feel like how do you feel that it's only you that has it with all the family she would say well it was rather I would rather it was only me than me plus yeah. other people or anyone else so yeah definitely does she have a pacemaker yeah so she got a pacemaker fitted and it's basically just if her heart was to stop, it kickstarts it um, back to start again in case she ever was to, you know, have a heart attack or something like that. God forbid. Does but the yeah. pacemaker help with the palpitations and stuff or does it just mean that, does it ease them off a bit? How does it make um, a difference? No, so it doesn't really help with any of the symptoms. So she still got everything still but it's just it's kind of a peace of mind thing as well um so that you know if it ever was to just because it's one of those ones where it, it's just a sudden um it, it could just your heart could literally just stop with it so it's just kind of something that will just start it back up again so it doesn't really help with any symptoms or ease anything and um, it's literally just there in case you know like the worst was to happen and it's just like the ultimate insurance policy as you say if something suddenly happens she's her body's covered because it kicks into action. Yeah, exactly. The, the fundraising aspect of it, did she know you were considering it or was it a surprise that you and maybe other members of your family have thought up to do? Yeah, so it was just me and my mum that thought to do it because um, I was quite stuck for it because a lot of the girls were doing something that was to involve them, but I've never really had um, anything like, bad happened that I've needed that you know that I've been helped with that I would fundraise for so that was really the, the best option for me is just well who who my family is getting helped like what with what charity would help somebody close to me and that was really the only one um but no she didn't know I just I, I just told her and she just thought it was a great idea because she does speak so highly of the people that help her so she just she thought that was a great choice for it when I ask that, does she have any interaction with people from the BHF? I don't know if it's them specifically. Um, it's just obviously people in NHS. She needs to go for, I think it's every three weeks she gets a checkup. Um, so she, they are quite a big part of her life, the, the doctors and stuff that um, she sees. Monthly, See long, really. Longer term, will she eventually need a transplant or is it as long as the pacemaker's working, then that's she's okay to go as she is? Yeah, so there's been no no talks of it so far. Um, but really, if it, it was just to progress worse, then she would need to because I think it needs to be, it needs to be at like a certain level of, like, severity for it to to you know get on, like the 
transplant like go up the list I think it's quite hard to get one so for now she's fine she's, she doesn't need one um, but you know it's not something to rule out in the future. How have the you, you and your wider family rallied round to to be like a help to her in her time of need? What has there been? Has everybody stepped up to the plate to help her and make her life easier? Yeah, so just whatever we can do, really. Um, she's one of those people, though. She doesn't like to ask for help, so it's it's hard to to do that for her. But just whatever we can, and it's weird as well because it makes you want to visit family more. It's a shame that something like that needs to happen to actually be like, oh my god. But it is it, like it is the case with a lot of things that you know you don't realise how important seeing people are until you you think that you you might not be able to for much longer. So it was, was kind of like, uh, just it was just a fright for everybody. So, And it was also something that we were all involved in because everybody had to get tested for it and everybody was just so scared because it was weeks that, um, that we had to wait to find out. So it has, like, you know, that way we kind of knew a wee bit how she felt with the waiting about to find out. Um, so, yeah, no, I wouldn't say it's necessarily brought us closer because we always have been dead there close, but it just it has made you realise, like, that is really just scary. So it's true though, because people there's the saying that like love hug your loved ones because you don't know when mm-hmm. you don't know which hug's gonna be the last one. And yeah. it's true, and I think that it's I think it's strange how life works that sometimes it takes a scare or something bad to happen to bring people to make people realise how important they are. Yeah. And it sounds as though it's it's good that the what's happened to your auntie's only been a scare and that it wasn't anything much more serious. And you've got this chance to hug her multiple times and tell her how much you love her. And that yeah. if she's been a proud woman and been not asking for help, that you can just put your foot down and help her because you know why she needs the help. Does that make sense? Yeah. Don't want to go yeah, sound like no. we're off on a tangent. No. Yeah, absolutely. So Ben Lomond, why Ben Lomond? Why Hillwalking? Are you a keen Hillwalker yourself? Um, yeah and no. So I, I'm not <laughs> the fittest. So it was kind of one of those ones I knew that would be challenging, but my friends would still want to do it with me and not be like, Abby, are you having a laugh? No way. Um, so it's one of those ones I think it's kind of like, it's not impossible to do, but it's still really challenging for us. Um, and also my friend Ross does a lot of fundraising. You've um, done a podcast with him before yeah. um, and that's something that he does he done like um, Ben Nevis and stuff like that so seeing him do that it just uh, it gave me an idea because I, you know that way I was like oh god how am I going to fundraise because I've done um, fundraising in the past before but I've used my dad's because um, he does um, events and stuff I've, I've like set up a stall and done fundraising through that but because of the pandemic he's not been able to have one for ages so I was trying to think like of other ways I could do it and it was um just that was the best option I thought and it was something as well that I could do with all my friends together and get everyone involved. In terms of being it's obviously a hard shift but it, it's quite you get a good sort of jovial team spirit and as you were saying about Ross I think if you had to ask him the, the West Highland Wayne stuff there's no way you could do that yourself but see if you've got a good team of people around you yeah, no yeah it just raises what you're capable of doing and I think he would say himself that exactly. all the fundraising he does that it's it's amazing but he would credit his friends for being there for him and helping him to push himself forward yeah exactly I know how many of you are going um so I don't have an exact number yet but probably like 10 to 15 it's just we're just trying to sort a date that everybody can kind of um, be there for it it's so hard trying to get something that everybody settles on but I'm thinking probably like start to like mid-September um so it's just I'm basically just saying to all my friends whoever wants to do it really um can come along and I think my family as well will want to do it super and are you are you looking forward to it how do you feel about it yeah you know I'm, I'm actually excited I feel like it'll be like a day out <laughs> <laughs> It's lovely on a nice day as well. That's it's, it's really lovely. Lock Lomond and stuff is gorgeous. We're lucky to have it on our doorstep. I know. I know it should be good. I'm excited for it, really. Have you done other hill walks before or are you just going in totally as a total newbie? Um, 
I've done ones ages ago I can't even remember the name of them now I always get mixed up with them and I don't want to say the wrong one in case somebody's like no there's no way you've done that <laughs> so I won't, I won't even say but I have done a few before <laughs> then we'll start to round off so tell people yeah. where they can find the fundraiser and donate so it's in my um, Instagram so it's a GoFundMe and it's in my Instagram bio if they just click on that I think it directs them straight to it what is your Instagram handle? I'll put it in the, the podcast notes as well, but what is your at for anyone listening? So it's Abby Lovering, it's A-B-B-I-E, and then love and ring, all the one word. Personally for you, if you were to win Miss Scotland, how would you celebrate? A big party. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's all I can think of, just a big party of all my friends and family to celebrate. I think it would be the best way something that I want to do excellent right so before say bye and stuff that's me I've obviously been through all the questions perfect thanks so much no you're welcome thank you see you later on see you later bye 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 and there you have it big thanks to Abby for her time Abby's Instagram and the link to her fundraiser can both be found in the show notes in the week that leads up to Abby and her friends going up in Lomond, Abby's GoFundMe will also be within the Linktree bio that is included on the Lost for Words Instagram. Now on to the usual pieces to see you out. The best way to keep up to date with future episodes of Lost for Words is to follow using the handle at Lost for Words Pod on both Twitter and Instagram. To support the show, please hit the subscribe button wherever you get your podcasts and if you're an Apple podcast user, a five-star review really does mean the world and it helps us to keep growing. If you like what you hear, then even consider telling someone because word of mouth is also massively important. That's all for this week. I am your host Jason and this week's interview was with Abby Lovering. I hope to see you back next week for another episode of the Lost for Words podcast.